We've said it before and we'll say it again. Badminton is the fastest sport in the world, with shuttles travelling over 400 kilometres an hour. Service over. That's 150 kilometres an hour faster than the fastest tennis serve and even faster than a Formula One car. Well, how do you actually train yourself to react faster to the shuttle on court? Well, in this video, we're going to show you four fun ways you can do this. So we originally saw a clip on YouTube of an Australian boxer catching four coins in a row. And we had to try it. But we thought we should start with three coins to ease ourselves in. But it turned out this was still really difficult. But like anything, the more we practiced, the better we got. And we eventually caught all three coins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we tried four coins. After about 45 minutes of practice, we were still struggling to catch them all. I think we might need a bit more practice. But Greg was finally successful, although not with the boxing technique. Does this count? Well, that was hard, really hard. And whilst that isn't the most badminton specific exercise, it really did show us that the more you practice something, the better you generally get at it over time. And we'll talk more about this in relation to reaction speed later in the video. And for the second exercise we have, you just need a tennis ball. And this isn't only gonna improve your reaction speed, it's also gonna improve your peripheral vision and movement, both of which are very important in badminton. So set up like this, and as you can see, I'm throwing the ball over Jenny's head to either her forehand or backhand side. And she has to move and catch it with her racket hand whilst also lunging on her racket leg like she would on court. Because we've done this quite a lot, she's pretty good at it. So I can make it a little bit harder for her by throwing it a little bit further. And feeding this is definitely a skill in itself. This third exercise is a lot of fun. And for this, we're gonna need some newspaper or bin bags. You want to hang them over the net and practice doing some multi-shuttle training. As you can see here, I'm practicing my sharpness and speed around the net. You can also do a single shuttle rally back and forth with your partner, but you do have to be cooperative. We'd again suggest doing net or four corner defense like this if you want a challenge. Our final method of improving your reactions is one we've been using a lot in the last few months. These are called blaze pods, which were kindly sent to us to try out. They haven't asked us to include them in a video, we just genuinely love using them. So these pods connect up to an app on your phone and you can program them to do literally anything. And anyone that knows me knows that I'm very competitive. And these are great for bringing out that competitive side of me as the app tells you how long it takes to complete each challenge. One of our favorite preset programs is the plank competition, where we can test our reactions and also work on a core at the same time. So I'm green, Jenny's red. Let's go, let's have it, come on. Good start. Ah. You touched mine. <laughs> Could be close. Ooh, I got 26, 26 hits. Oh. Greg got 26 hits. Sure, we'll take that. My reaction time was actually quicker though. What? Mine was oh. 0.542 and Greg's was 0.555. As we've said, you can program them to do literally anything. So we've decided to replicate the last rally of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics men's singles final, Victor Axelsson versus Chen Long. Can Greg match the speed of Olympic champion Victor Axelsson? Let's find out. Ready, set, go! 
And if you do want to join us and other sporting professionals, such as Anthony Joshua and Max Verstappen in using these blaze pods, then check out the link in the description below to their website. And you can also get 10% off using the discount code BADINSIGHTVIP10. Now here's the interesting stuff. It's not all about reaction time. We as humans can't actually instantly react in real time as the opponent hits the shuttle. So instead, we use our predictive mechanisms to predict where the shuttle's going. This means we need to improve our reading of the game. So looking at our opponent's body and grip, which might show us which shots they can and cannot play. The more accurate our predictive mechanisms are, the more accurate our response is likely to be. So what we're saying is, yes, these reaction drills we've done in this video are good, but the more specific you can make your practice in your on-court routines, the better your predictive mechanisms will be. And yes, you could do this by watching your opponent's positioning, but also improving your own, as we touched on in last week's backhand drive video, by having your racket ready higher up and also things like waiting in the right grip. Now we know a bounce and smash is nearly double the speed than the fastest tennis serve, but a few years ago, I played a professional tennis player and could I return his serve? Absolutely no chance. This is because I'm not trained to predict where the ball is going and make the necessary adjustments to be able to return it. We hope you've enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed creating it. Let us know in the comments below which was your favorite drill we showed today and how you get on with them. Don't forget to also give the video a like and smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. And while you're doing that, we need to give a shout out to KKH channel who won our Olympic prediction tournament here on YouTube for correctly predicting Victor Axelsson and Chen Yufei to win the Olympics, as well as predicting the Chinese, Li and Liu, and Zheng and Huang, who both got a silver medal. And also a shout out to Roger Adams, who won our Patreon prediction tournament. So a huge congratulations to him. He won a racket, a mug, and some other bits of kit. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you on another video very soon.